What's up guys, this is Demkeys and this is going to be part 3 of the Unity tile map series. If you haven't watched part 2 already, the link's going to be in the top right corner and in the description down below. In this video, we're going to take a look at the grid component, tile map component, tile map renderer component, and also how you can use colliders with the tile map. So we're going to start with the tile map component. So as you can see in the scene right now, along with our main camera, we also have a grid game object and two tile map game objects. So if I select the sky tile map game object, you can see that it has a tile map component attached to it. Let's take a look at some of the properties of the tile map component. First of all, you have animation frame rate. This is the frame rate for playing animated tiles on the tile map. We won't be using this option right now since we are not using any animated tiles yet, but in a future tutorial, we're gonna be using custom tiles and custom brushes. At that time, we're gonna look into this. Next, we have color. This is the color that tints all the sprites on the tile map. Currently, it's set to white, but if I change it to something close to red, for example, you can see the effect over here. All right, next you've got tile anchor. Now, before going into tile anchor, I wanna make the screen look a little less messy. So disable both of these tile map game objects and then right click on the grid game object and click 2d object tile map this is going to create another tile map for us and now real quick i want to add a tile to this tile map so this is a really simple image that i made in ms paint i'm going to be using these symbols a little later to help me with explaining something if you want to pause the video right now and draw this image real quick in ms paint that's fine if you don't want to draw it that's fine as well i'm going to be providing this with the art assets pack anyways all right so first of all we need to create a tile out of this sprite so drag it into the palette and then we need to select a folder to save the tile in and I'm going to call this symbol style. Hit save and now the tile is ready. As you can see the sprite is a little big so it's not fitting within the cell. So I'm going to change its pixels per unit value from 100 to 200 and once I hit apply it's perfectly fine. All right so first of all make sure that tile map is the active tile map and as you can see the other two tile maps don't appear in the list because they're currently disabled. All right so select this tile and just paint it into one cell over here. Now disable the paint tool, select the tile map game object and let's Let's get back to the explanation. So tile anchor is the anchoring position for the sprites from tiles in the tile map. It's currently set to 0.51 X and 0.51 Y, which is why you can see the sprite in the center of the cell. If you change the position, you'll see the sprite moving. Keep in mind though, that it's just the sprite position that's changing, not the tile position. So for example, if I change the position to 2 on X and 2 on Y, you'll see that the sprite has moved away from the tiles position. However, if I select this cell, you can still see this is the tile that's attached to it. It. It's just the sprite position that changes. The sprite is still attached to a tile and that tile is still in the same cell. So I'm going to change this back to 0.51 X and 0.51 Y. Real quick, I want to point out these settings apply to every tile on this tile map, not just a single tile. All right, next we have orientation. Now this is where these symbols on this sprite are going to help. So first of all, exit 2D mode so that we are looking at the tile map in 3D. And now I want you to pay attention to the symbols in this design and exactly where they are placed. So orientation allows you to set the the orientation for tiles in the tile map. Currently, it's set to X, Y. So the tile's orientation is such that its local X axis is aligned with the local X axis of the tile map and its local Y axis is aligned with the local Y axis of the tile map. Now again, remember where exactly these symbols are on this sprite because that'll help you understand the orientation when we change it. So change the orientation from X, Y to X, Z. The first thing you'll notice is that the tile appears to be rotated in a certain way. Now, the tile's local X axis is aligned to the local X axis axis of the tile map game object, but its local Y axis is aligned to the local Z axis of the tile map game object. To better understand it, you can look at it from this angle. I'm also going to switch to the transform tool and also make sure you're looking at the local axis of the game object. Now, if it helps make this a little less confusing, understand this. The only thing happening when you change the orientation is that the tile gets rotated a certain way. And as you can see, the tile has been rotated a certain way. So its X and Y axes are now aligned to the X Z plane instead. What this means is that as I mentioned before, the tile's x-axis is aligned to the local x-axis of the tile map game object and the tile's local y-axis is aligned to the local z-axis of the tile map game object. Now again, even with this, this applies to all tiles on the tile map, not just one. If you want to know exactly what the rotation is, you can see the value on each axis right here. Next, try changing the orientation to y-x. Now this is why I told you to memorize exactly what the sprite looks like. As you can see in the scene and even in the inspector, the tile has been rotated a certain way. But this time it was rotated so that the tile's local X axis is aligned to the local Y axis of the tile map game object and the tile's local Y axis is aligned to the local X axis of the tile map game object. Real quick if we go back to the X Y orientation, 
as you can see the tile's local x-axis is pointing in this direction and its local y-axis is pointing in this direction. Now if you want the tile's local x-axis to point in this direction instead and you want the tile's local y-axis to point in this direction, the tile has to be rotated a certain way. And that's all that's happening when we change the orientation to y-x. So now I'm going to run through the other three orientations real quick since I've already explained how orientation works. YZ orientation means that the tile's local X axis will be aligned to the local Y axis of the tile map game object and its local Y axis will be aligned to the local Z axis of the tile map game object. And this is the result. ZX orientation means the tile's local X axis will be aligned to the local Z axis of the tile map game object and the tile's local Y axis will be aligned to the local Z axis of the tile map game object. ZY orientation means the tile's local X axis will be aligned to the local Z axis of the tile map game object and the tile's local Y axis will be aligned to the local y-axis of the tile map game object and you can see that here. Finally we have custom. This lets you set a custom orientation but that's not just rotation it's position, rotation and scale. Let's start with position. Position basically lets you specify a position offset for each tile. So for example you can see where the tile is right now. If I change the position to something like this you can see the tile's position has changed. If you switch to the select tool and select this cell you'll see the tile is still in that cell, but its position has been offset. Next you have rotation. This lets you specify the rotation on each axis. And then you have scale. This lets you specify the scale on each axis. And as I mentioned before, these settings apply to all the tiles on the tile map, not just one. Next we're going to talk about the tile map render, which is this component right here. But before that, enter 2D mode again by clicking this button or hitting 2 on your keyboard. Then control select this tile right here and paint an X pattern onto the tile map. Next make sure the tile map's orientation is set to custom, set the position and rotation to 0 on all axes, but set the scale to 1.5 on all axes. So now, as you can see, we have overlapping tiles. Alright, so the tile map renderer is used to render the tile map marked out by the tile map component and the grid component. Let's take a look at some of the properties of the tile map renderer. First of all, you have material. This is the material that will be used by the renderer. It's currently set to sprites default. We're just going to leave it at that. Next, you have sort order. Okay, so here you have four options. Bottom left, bottom right, top left, and top right. So let's take a look at each one of them. By default, it's set to bottom left. Bottom left sorts the tiles for rendering starting from the tile with the lowest X and lowest Y cell positions. What does this mean? If you select this cell right here, you can see its position is 10 on X and 5 on Y. And if you select this cell right here, you'll see its position is 11 on X and 6 on Y. So between these two tiles, this tile will be rendered first and this tile will be rendered after that. And you can already see that happening here. So we have five tiles here. If you pick any two tiles, and try to apply the bottom left rule to them, you'll understand why one may be overlapping the other. Next, control select this tile and paint it into these two cells. So next we have the bottom right sort order. Bottom right sorts the tiles for rendering, starting with the tile with the highest X and the lowest Y cell position. So if you compare this cell and this cell, you'll notice that this cell has a higher X position than this cell. And so it's rendered first and then this cell is rendered on top of it. Now at this point you get how sort order rules work. So I'm just going to run through the other two real quick. Top left sorts the tiles for rendering, starting from the tile with the lowest X and the highest Y cell position. And top right sorts the tiles for rendering, starting from the tile with the highest X and the lowest Y cell position. Next, we have sort layer. This lets you decide which sorting layer this tile map is a part of. Currently, it's set to default. Let's make a duplicate of this tile map and paint a couple of extra tiles onto this tile map just so we can tell the difference. All right, now click sorting layer and click add sorting layer. So now we can see the list of sorting layers. And as you can see, there's only one right now, which is default. Click plus to add a new sorting layer. Let's just call it my sorting layer 01. And if you want to remove a sorting layer, you can just select the sorting layer and click minus. All right, so select this tile map and set its sorting layer to my sorting layer 01. Then click layers, edit layers. This lets us take a look at the sorting layers list. So the layers are rendered in exactly this order. If you want to change the sorting order you can just drag the layers to move them around. So now if I want to change the order of my sorting layer 01 I can just bring it up here and now as you can see my sorting layer 01 is being rendered first and the default layer is being rendered after that. Now let's say both the tile maps belong to the same sorting layer. How do you sort it in that case? In that case you have to use order in layer. Again even here the order will be exactly how you specify it. So if I set this tile maps order in layer to let's say negative one it will be rendered first and then this tile map whose order in layer is set to 
0 will be rendered. Next we have mask interaction. This specifies how the tile map interacts with masks, like a sprite mask. So let's create a simple sprite mask. Right click in the hierarchy, click 2D object, sprite mask. Now I'm not going to be going into detail with sprite masks because that goes beyond the scope of this tutorial. So right click in the sprites folder, click create, sprites, circle. This is going to create a circle sprite for us. Then select the sprite mask game object and drag and drop the circle sprite into the sprite field of the sprite mask component. Now select the tile map game object and under the tile map renderer component set mask interaction from none to visible inside mask. Now as you can see this tile map seems to have disappeared now but if I increase the size of this sprite mask and move it over this area where the tile map is supposed to be now you can see the tile map and on the other hand if I change the mask interaction to visible outside mask now you can only see all the parts of the tile map that are outside the sprite mask. Alright so that's it about the tile map renderer component. Disable the sprite mask and this tile map. Alright now before we continue let's just change this orientation back to XY so that our tiles become the old normal size and now let's take a look at the grid component. The grid determines the layout of tile maps within it. So for example since these tile maps are all children of this grid game object their layout will be determined by this grid. So let's take a look at the properties of the grid component. First of all you have cell size. This is the size of each cell. You can set the size on each axis. So for example I can change it to 2 on X and 1 on Y and you can see the result here. Next we have cell gap. This is the size of the gap between each cell on the grid. Again, even over here, you can specify the size on individual axes. So for example, I can set the cell gap to 1 on X and 1 on Y, and you can see the result here. Now if I enter paint mode and select one of these tiles and try painting, you'll see there's a different behavior. This is because the cell gap has been created over here. Set the cell gap back to 0 on all axes. And next we have cell swizzle. Now before we go further into this, let's clean up the style map a little bit. So erase these tiles. Then we need to find the center of the tile map. So first of all, select the tile map and then enable the transform tool and as you can see this is roughly around the area that we are looking for we don't have to be very precise all right so now we're going to paint some tiles here select each of these tiles individually and paint them onto the tile map all right now exit paint mode and go into 3d mode by hitting 2 on the keyboard or clicking this button right here all right so currently cell swizzle is set to x y z if we switch it to x z y the y and the z coordinates have been swapped so for any given cell, the Y position is applied to the Z axis and the Z position is applied to the Y axis. Now when I say axis here, I mean the local axis of the tile map. If we set cell swizzle to Y, X, Z, the X and the Y coordinates get swapped. Now real quick, I'm going to switch back to X, Y, Z and I'm going to select this tile right here and note down its position. The position is 11 on X, 4 on Y and 0 on Z. Now if I switch back to Y, X, Z again and select this tile right here, you can see that this tile's position is 11 on X but that position has instead been applied to the Y axis and the Y position has instead been applied to the Z axis. Now before we continue, switch back to X, Y, Z and then just control select all of these tiles and paint them here and here. Alright, moving on, if I switch to Y, Z, X, the Y position is applied to the X axis, the Z position is applied to the Y axis and the X position is applied to the Z axis and you can see that here. Now since you understand how cell swizzle works, I'm going to run through the remaining options real quick. If you select Z, X, Y, the Z position is applied to the X axis, the X position is applied to the Y axis, and the Y position is applied to the Z axis. If you select Z, Y, X, the Z position is applied to the X axis, the Y position is applied to the Y axis, and the X position is applied to the Z axis. Switch back to X, Y, Z, and that's it for the grid component. Go back into 2D mode, and the last thing we're going to talk about is using 2D colliders with tile maps. And this is also where we're going to take a look at this little menu that we have here. So we're going to start by erasing all the tiles on this tile map and then control select this spike tile right here and paint four tiles onto the tile map. Next select this tile and just paint a small line of tiles right here. Now with the first tile map selected add a tile map collider 2D component to it. Now as you can see there's a collider on each tile. Real quick let's test out the collision. Drag and drop this circle sprite into the scene then with the circle game object selected add a rigid body 2D component to it and a circle collider 2D as well. And before you hit play make sure to drag the game view from here down here just so it's not obstructing our view. Then hit play and as you can see we have collision taking place. Now control select this tile in the tile palette window and then right click here and click select tile asset. This will select the spike tile asset in the project panel. Now if you look at the collider type property it's currently set to sprite. This means that the sprite's physics shape will be used to determine the shape of the collider for the tile. However if you select the tile map game object and look at the colliders around the spikes you'll notice the colliders don't really fit the shape of the spikes they're a little big. 
So select the sprite sheet that the spike belongs to, open up the sprite editor, and then in this top left drop down, select edit physics shape. And now if you click here, you can see nodes describing the physics shape of this sprite. You can add more nodes by clicking anywhere on the line, and you can also delete nodes by selecting them and hitting delete. So once you're satisfied with the physics shape, hit apply, then go back to the tile map and disable and re-enable the tile map collider 2D. And as you can see, now the collider shape has changed. Now if we set the tiles collider type to grid instead, then the collider for each tile will take the shape of the cell. If we set the collider type to none, then no colliders will be generated for that specific tile. Now, tile map collider 2D isn't the only 2D collider you can use for tile maps. Other 2D colliders work too. For example, let's try using a box collider 2D instead. Remove the tile map collider 2D component, create an empty game object, name it colliders, and add a box collider 2D component to it. Reposition the game object so it's above these tiles right here, and then scale it so it fits all of these tiles. Make a duplicate of this game object, bring it up here. Now in this case, we're gonna use a polygon collider instead so that we can better fit the shape of the spikes. So remove the box collider 2D component, add a polygon collider 2D instead, and real quick, I'm just gonna edit this collider. Now run the game, and as you can see, we have collision. All right, now real quick, I wanna point out that just like you can select the tile asset, you can also select the paint target, which is the tile map, and you can also select the palette prefab. And this last option here basically enables editing for the palette. So we are pretty much done learning about tile maps. One last thing to do is to create a simple playable level using tile maps. And we'll do that in the next video. I hope this video is helpful. If you wanna check out the next video, the link should be up on the screen right now. If you wanna check out Glowing Dude series on how he made these art assets, the link should be up on the screen right now as well. If you wanna help me out with a donation, my PayPal email address should be up on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.